Hello guys, uh, you know who I am. I am doing this video because uh, I've actually done this video multiple times before. Um, tonight, it's going to be my third time trying to re-record this, uh, but I've had multiple other takes that are just 30 minutes long, an hour long, 14, yeah, like 5 minutes long. Just like It goes back and forth because I always feel wrong about how it feels or if it's right or whatever. Um, but I realized that I just need to do this because it's what's right for me. I realized that in the long picture, if I want to be who I am, it's right for you guys. To at least, in a sense, see me in this uh, vulnerable state. Because that, that's what I represent. I want to be true with you about the good and the bad. So, um, I'm not really weird. I think that looks too good. It's like one of my just casual PJ-ish shirts, so I apologize. But uh, I wanted to at least get this out. Because constantly, in a form of, uh, I want to make this look good, or appealing, or just come off right, I never make this. And it's turned to this game of, when do I have enough motivation, procrastination. And I think, honestly, it works really well for this message. Um, so, <sighs> this video's not going to be edited. Um, it's going to be a bit longer, probably, so I apologize if you don't like that. Um, this is going to be straight, and... Uh, I hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, I actually had my own little journal that I wrote all these pinpoints in, but I'm not going to be using that for this. So, um, yeah, let's go. So I'm sure if you guys have all been wondering where I've been. And, um, you know, when it comes to stress and suffering and trying to get through things, um, you know, you could come up with a lot of things to talk about, especially when it comes to uh, overcoming that. When I was younger, I know I've dealt with a lot of things um, when it comes to, honestly, just abuse, loneliness, depression, um, trying to make myself feel real. Uh, but at the same time, there were things where at least once you got over that hurdle, it got you to another point of potential, right? Um, so, like, for example, like, let's say you do well in high school. You'll have a chance to go to college, right? That's a very simple one. It's like, okay, you go over one staircase, you can make it to the next, right? But what if sometimes there is no guarantee of that next staircase? What if you don't even have a set of stairs at all? And that's that's kind of where we're at right now and where the story is going to uh, divulge, okay? So um, within the last few months, I have dealt with a lot of uh, heartache, Uh I'll tell you one story because I don't feel like I'm at the privilege to tell all of them because um, a lot of them involve other personal family members. And uh, that's where I kind of like draw the line of like telling you guys things because I don't always know if that's like something I can even tell because it's not mine to com completely tell. Right. And I don't think that's fair of me. However, um, I will tell you what I can. So um, there was a time where uh, was me and my girlfriend were basically uh, moving because um, we didn't feel comfortable in the lifting situation we were in. Okay, um, that's when we ended the basically the last two views we've seen. That's when I left. Okay, and uh, I was going to go down south, um, to help out family with some uh, various things. Okay, and uh, during this time, it was made like midnight, you know, and this drive is like a long drive, very long drive, um, and essentially it was around midnight. I was driving behind me. There was another, um, let's say it was the SUV into the right, in the right lane. Backways was a semi truck. Pitch black, pitch black. You could see a little bit the sides of the roads with um, some grass, but it was pitch black. And uh, the thing you could see the headlights uh, with the brights on. Well, it was almost like it was slow motion, you know? I had the music going on in the car. I'm driving. <laughs> And let me mind you, I'm in a Prius. Um, and as I keep going, all of a sudden, there's no guard railings to the left. And the, what would be a median, because the other side, there's also a road. Um, but yeah, there's like there's so little people. You, there was no no lights on the other side. This deer started coming across, and it was a doe. I swear, it was the biggest doe I see in my life. It was, it was huge. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is that's moving. It's gonna be running into my lane. And you can remember, I'm probably going like 70 mile an hour, right? Because that's what the road is. And um, you have to make a decision right there. Either 
I'm slowing down. I'm getting rear-ended. I'm probably going to still be hitting this deer. I go into the right lane, and I take my chance of not hitting this deer. If I do, then obviously that semi is going to be killing me. Um, and, or I go into the, to the ditch, which that might not even work either. I could maybe hit straight in front of it, and I'll go through my windshield. I only had one option, really, of, of taking a risk, and this was I hit the butt of the deer, and maybe... I can squeeze past him, right? Taking some damage. That's what I decided, right? So that deer's in front of me. Um, basically, I, I started accelerating a little bit because I slowed down beforehand by accelerating a little bit, going past his butt. Bam, right? The whole butt just goes. Pfft. The headlight shatters as I hear this, right? And then all of a sudden, its head just hits the back uh, right door, leaves a little bit of a dent, and then it just you know, buffs off, but you know, there goes the entire light, right? I hear screaming because my girlfriend's screaming, right? Um, you can see a little bit of blood that's splattered. And now I'm with only one bright and a headlight and I'm going forward. I'm trying to recalculate. So I'm like, you know, after the hits, like, you know, I'm, and, and we didn't go off the road. So thank God. But now, you know, we, I'm trying to resteady it because you can, obviously, I don't know what the damage is, um, but you can hear some and this car behind me. So try my, immediately try my emergencies. I go to the right and I pull over. Uh, we were able to safely get into the shoulder of the road, but um, for some reason I, I wasn't surprised when that happened. Um, the semi truck and the car just kept going, and I I remember I always smirked at that moment because it's like, what did I expect? You know what I mean? And this is in a time of my life where not a lot of good things were happening, like um, a lot of relations with uh, friends, family. Um, my faith in myself hadn't been going well, and um, that just kind of was uh, a kiss on top of it all. So, anyways, so um, I was frantic to check if my girlfriend was okay. She was, and thank God. Okay. Um, then I went over to uh to check out the damage, and the whole the whole right section of that car, that quarter panel, was just poof, gone. Um. I wrapped some stuff around my hands to try, try and pull the metal up a little bit from the tire itself and uh, deal with it. Um, but for the most part, surprisingly, the frame itself was fine. And had it been over just a little bit more, it either would have went, either would have torn that frame down or if it would have went through the uh, windshield. So we were lucky. We were blessed. Um, I called my father a little bit. He um, kind of got me through a little bit more of it. And... Uh, then we got state patrol and very, very nice gentleman. And he helped us uh, get to the uh, hospital. At this point, though, as messed up as it sounds, I wasn't even worried about my own life. It was just, here's the money I have to, set, I have to spend. Why? And uh, I'm glad my girlfriend's okay. And I remember when we got to the hotel, officer kind of just dropped us off there and left, right? Didn't really ask much else. Um, I opened up the uh, the back left side door um, because we were trying to grab ourselves and, and just go inside just to calm down, right? Because um, I was just inside my own head. And the first thing that pops out, because remember, like, after the crash, everything was kind of scattered. The first thing that just is sitting there in front of my eyes. It's my Bible. And I'm like, my God, my God. So I take that, grab some clothes, and I go inside. And, uh, you know, it's kind of embarrassing, but I think I'll just say it anyway. It's just because, again, it's like, um, I remember when I went inside, the, one of the first things I did was I just I sat in the bed. I went to the bathroom. I ran myself a bath, and I just sat there staring forward. Just thinking. And I think I'm blessed I have my girlfriend. Yeah, I'm very blessed. But the first thing I thought of uh, when all that happened was had something happened, I don't think many people would have known. I would have died. She would have died. I don't think they would have known. And worse than even that was I don't think they would have even cared. That's what killed me. <laughs> anyway, so there's more stuff that happened with that. You know, went down south, dealt with all that. 
Which even that wasn't that fun. But mm. fast forwarding, um, you know, I've had to deal with some funerals. Um, on my on my birthday, um, in July, I learned that uh, my grandma died, or at least one of them. Um, and again, trying to get into it without going into it, she died a somewhat gruesome death. Um, and hearing from it the way I did on my birthday was very tragic for me. And uh, I remember uh, I I was in the car with again my girlfriend, just trying to smile. And I just I couldn't I couldn't stop crying. Or not like that by us tears, right? But I held myself together. And then uh the moment I went in to uh because they were having a little birthday dinner for me, right? At um family members. The moment I went in, uh I just started tearing up and I had to excuse myself. On the pun- on the front porch you just So that's another hard hit. And then right after that next, um my dog, Dollar, he uh he was getting very sick. He was a sweet golden retriever. I like to think of him as a as a you know, gentle lion, right? And uh he he ended up um getting very sick, having respiratory issues and coughing up blood. Well, after uh going out for the weekend, we come back and it's it's almost exactly at the time we get back. Dog's just looking at me. He's sitting in his bed and he just does not look good. I'm like, oh my gosh. I sit there, I hold his head and it's like, this is, something's up. And, um, anyways, um, I, we get the family together and, um, he starts having these, these, I want to call them almost like seizures. They weren't exactly that, but essentially what they were. He kept turning over and it was, it was pretty bad. It was horrible. So I had to hold him, hold him up so he could breathe right. Um, I called for my Bible, and I had it, and I remember just reciting some verses, you know, anyway, some family members are around, um, my little sister was waiting downstairs, because my mom didn't want them to see them, and, uh, and basically after I did the verses, the seizures weren't it was peaceful, and I held them until the uh, until they stopped breathing. And everyone else kept crying, but I just I couldn't. And uh, they got up, they left, and I was just still sitting there. Ended up uh, wrapping him up and putting him in the back of the uh, the truck until we had to bury him. And um, it was a night around. Uh, Maybe 9 to 10 p.m. The stars are out. I'm just sitting there. Thinking about how I made sure to hold his head the entire time. Because I think that's that's what he wanted. He didn't want to be alone. And he was happy because he wasn't alone. I remember just sitting there. In the uh, the back of that, that pickup truck with him. His body just slowly, you know, the heat coming from it. And uh, looking at the stars. After that, um, you know, there's just a lot of things that have been hard on me lately. <sighs> Not only that, but then, you know, my uh, other family family members or other friends that have been dealing with hardships um honestly my own physical health I mean uh I haven't been doing well I haven't yeah I just haven't been doing too well um I just actually went to the doctor to uh, find out that I have a pretty bad psoriasis I've, I've been trying to hide quite a bit but um pieces of my hair and scalp will just start will, will come off in chunks 
and it's uh it's it's pretty yucky looking um one of the things i'm been very insecure about learning more about dealing with my stress and uh, and my anxiety it's it's embarrassing to talk about but it gets to the point where like you know i'm just have almost constant anxiety like panic attacks or things that just are very minuscule or um especially especially depression is pretty bad so why do i talk about this you know even friends i a lot of friends I feel like I'm not as connected to. And a lot of it's also my fault. Because um, I oftentimes feel scared to reach out as well sometimes. Um, or a question even if I feel comfortable doing so. If I'm a burden on certain things. Uh, I remember one of the worst things was uh, actually... Uh, I found out they weren't dead, but uh, <laughs> it's a funny story. Someone got their account hacked, and um, this is way back, but they were, they they were told me that they were dead. And I was like, oh my gosh! I remember, I remember, I felt so sad that I heard they were dead, and like they, I got back that like they they weren't dead. And I was like, oh jeez, thank God, right? <laughs> but remember that got to me too. <sighs> but why do I tell you all this? Why do I tell you just all these sad, sappy stories now, right? Like, oh, just my life sucks. This is bad. Honestly, one of the worst things is I've looked at myself lately and all these bad things that happened. I almost question myself. Is this like, okay, is this something just I deserve? Is this what I, is something destined for me? Because beforehand, again, there's no stairs, right? What if there are no stairs? What if everything just starts falling apart on you and you feel like your life just isn't there? What if you feel like your friends aren't there? Your family hates you. Your people that should love you are gone they're literally dying on you right i feel like financially you haven't been doing well or health wise you haven't been doing well or religiously like let's just say everything's been going down what do you do in those scenarios oftentimes i would recommend truly there is motivation people say you know motivation isn't all of it and i i agree to an extent but I think of motivation kind of as um, eating, in a sense, really. Or like spirituality. You can't just do it once. Be like, oh, there it is. It's all there. No, you have to do it constantly. It's a constant act of working at it. And that's what grows it over time. And that's where you get to a nice, good headspace. Right? It's kind of like if you have only negative thoughts. They will consume you. Now, with when it gets to a point where... That's not enough because sometimes it won't be enough. Sometimes you have situations that are just so heavy on you that you just can't get through that. What do you do then? Like when it comes to my, my family members that have died, my dog. Can you bring that back? Is there any amount of motivation going to bring me back? The answer is no. So what do you do then? And the answer is, honestly, I don't always know because every situation is different. But I will, what I will tell you is you can't just think it as surface level stuff because it's not. There's always more to it. What was the impact of that moment? Was it all worth it? Did you put everything you could into that? What are you going to do now? That's what you have to think now. Because you're still here. You still had influence in their life. They still had influence on yours. This is the reality you live in. And this is where all these little moments have led up to this point. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I stand to you before as a person that has always come from the ground up. That has had to crawl their way through what seems like hell to make it through things. And... Just talking like this isn't going to be enough for a lot of people. Some people are going to just see this as another video and they're not going to get what I'm saying. But to everyone that sees what I'm saying, to everyone that I'm looking through through this screen of electrical conductors, try your best to hear what I'm saying, okay? This life is not something where constantly there's always going to be 
here's exactly how you do it. Sometimes you just have to rip and tear your way and make a little step by little step and little step. And maybe you have a little bit of imposter syndrome. Sometimes that's literally what it is. You fake it till you make it. But eventually you're going to have to make it some way or another. And it doesn't matter exactly how you get there. The answer is, did you get there? And that's what this conversation is about today. I've had multiple stories where I thought that I wasn't meant for it, that I thought everything was just down and gone and that my reality would never switch. But because I took this leap of faith, because I took something, that's how I got to the other end. I'll be frank with you. Even now, I've been dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety. I've been losing a lot of um, sleep over things. I've felt sick. Um, just, I mean, the last few days, I, I've literally gotten to the point where I've been trying to work out more and I will get done and throughout the rest of the day, I will feel so sick that I can hardly get out of bed. Um, my back will be cracking. Uh, my, my head will just straight up be bleeding. Like not just low, like it will be bleeding with chunks of shit coming out. Um, I'll hardly be able to stand up. I need help sometimes doing things, but that's not enough for me to just be like, oh, well, guess what? I get to throw in the towel. That's my excuse. That's not, that's not because I believe that God put me on this earth for a purpose. And I think he put you on this earth for a purpose. And when you see these little things, when you think of the children that let's say have to probe every day, knowing that they're not going to have a mom or a dad or the individuals that get up every day without a limb. Is that what you just say to them? It's like, well, uh, that's that's too fucking bad. I say fuck that. I say fuck that. Let alone to the examples where they're able to get through situations like that. Now, I'm not trying to make this some fantasy story where it's just you get through shit and just like, oh, yippee. Because that's not that. It is literally ripping your hands through sandpaper and over and over and over and over and over again. Until that sandpaper breaks. That's what you're essentially doing when you're trying to rip your way through things. And I, I don't like talking about this because it just it, it seems very cliche. But the answer to all this shit truly is unbridled discipline. And that's what, it, that's what this is going to be. I'm not here to tell you that this could be good. Just saying this right now, it makes me feel sick. I feel sick in my stomach even now. I don't feel right about making this video. I don't feel right about any of this. This doesn't feel right. I'm going to upload this and it's going to feel off still. But I'm speaking to you from someone that even now feels unchecked, broken, just twisted, and just knotted, and just disgusting. I want the best for you. And because of who I am, I'm not just going to sit here and release something or make some videos and pretend everything's okay and just try to speak to you as someone that um, pretends that I have the content that I have or the image that I have and not be genuine. Put some kind of facade of this is how you get somewhere. It's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. The reason I'm here the way I am now is because of the blessings I have from God, and I mean that. Had it not been for the unbridled soul that I've been given because of that, that has given me the ambition to push forward, I don't know what if I, if I would have what it takes because that's what it is. There's one thing I think of uh, from the story of Job. And of course, I still have things I'm very grateful for. I have, but, you know, there's moments when, you know, I think about the story of Job, how uh, he lost everything. He lost everything. And he, you know, his, you know, the people around him were after he lost everything. His, you know, his kid, his wife, his, his everything. Everyone looked at him. He's like, you know, maybe you do deserve this. Do you? Have you thought about that? And when he does finally speak to God, he questions God and all these things. Essentially, the first thing God says to him is, get ready. Embrace yourself like a man. As he proceeds to basically tell him everything about how he's made the earth. And can you really question everything? Are you God? But it's a, it's a specific part, which... I know I'm probably overreading into, but I think about it all the time. It's one of those quotes for me. Just embrace yourself like a man. Prepare yourself and embrace yourself like a man. It's one of those things where essentially the first thing I think in my mind is, you know, there are some things in this life you just don't 
get an easy way out of. You're going to hear it. You're going to deal with it. And you better get ready. Because if you want the answer, if you want the real way to get through it, that's what it is. Don't get me wrong. I do think in the same way. Um, people need love. And that's why I'm here for you guys. That's why that if anyone needs me or wants to talk to me, I'm going to try my best to be here. And in a sense, this is my way of you know loving you guys, telling you what's been going on in my mind. Um, I still have uh, you know, pretty bad depression. Honestly, I still get insane panic attacks to the point that my heart rate feels like it's just going to blow out my chest. Um, but you know, I I haven't given up yet, and I look forward. I've thought honestly about all this time with feeling comfortable around friends, feeling like a nuisance, feeling like I'm not me, feeling like honestly complete failure. Is this it? Can I just... Maybe this isn't meant for me. This whole thing. Especially with all the bad things I've had in my life so far. They're just completely unrelated to this, this YouTube grind, right? I think about that a lot. And... Again, I honestly, I have just thought, you know what, this might be something I am not destined to exist a part of. And, you know, I could say some things that I, and I do believe this. I do believe in saying this, like, beforehand, when I do feel motive, motivated, where it's like, you know what? I rebuke my destiny. I struggle against destiny. That is who I am. That is always what I've done. I have ripped away from that because if you do that, you'll be one of the world. And as Christ was, he was not part of the world. You must separate yourself from that. And that's why I push forward. That's why I had the belief I had. That's why even in this shell that you see, I have a belief that I can push myself beyond that. And that is something that this is not the end goal. This is not it. This is a blessing by itself. That this, there's something beyond that that can be crafted. And that goes for you as well. Every last thing, every last thought, there's a potential to it. Until the day you die, there is nothing you can say that is concrete. And so I um I open up to you with this. I uh I actually had a I'll even say this. I have a friend that has always been there for me. I've had multiple people that have always been there for me. And I have, even for the little things, I've been grateful. And you could look at people and be like, oh, well, well, what if they haven't been there for you? It takes a lot for me to believe that there has not been someone that has had your thought in mind. Or even then, you can't be grateful to. My great-grandpa that died in World War II. Or not, they didn't die in World War II. <laughs> that actually fought through World War II. Uh, and he died. He, he was crazy. I would love to tell that story. But um, he... The reason he fought is now why I'm here. If he had just given up or died, would that, would that mean anything? And sure, maybe he doesn't know exactly everything I am now. But that's like, does that give me any right not to be thankful for who he is? Or maybe even, you know, friends of mine that have now turned to pretty dark shit that have been there for me for a little bit, you know, sets a few nice things to me. Does that not overlap? In your mind, you could just reduce that. But the thing is about good moments, you can always look at them and think, you know what? I'm grateful for that. Because in this world of destruction and chaos and just evil honestly we are guaranteed that simply just by death honestly but we aren't always guaranteed happiness i don't believe so we aren't and that's why we have to be blessed for every little thing that we get everything since the moment you were born the only thing that was guaranteed is evil and you have to fight for every little little thing and once you do get that, embrace it. Full heart. 
when I look at my friends, there are multiple things that I've been gr uh, granted and gifted. And bringing this into a little more focused frame, when it comes to my goals, especially this, um, I've been, again, I've been blessed. I've been very grateful for what I've been given. This is, um, this is something I've been given a year ago from one friend of mine that I like to be, I like to deem as my, one of my best friends. I'm not always there for them. Um, I'm always, you know, focusing myself, honestly, doing a lot of things, but I, I always try my best to, um, speak well of them always because I, they mean a lot to me and, um, you know, they've been there for me ever since a long time ago. I think it's been 2016. Like it's been years that I've been friends with this person. And no matter what, they've always been positive, pushed me forward, giving me everything. And for that, I'm grateful. But at the same time, I look introspectively and I think to myself, you know, of all these times where I have fallen down. And I think an average rational person would be like, yeah, maybe you should just put up the mantle, right? Move on. Don't stress yourself with these things. I can't do that. I can't do that because I've went through the cycle where the first time it's like, you know what? I'm doing this for other people. When the reality was, no, you are, you want this, you want this, right? And then final full circle is this isn't just about what you want anymore. You want this, you to love what you want because the truth is that's what's going to drive this. But there's other people that have put their love and faith and everything into you. And they want to see this dream fulfilled as well. Because even though they can't see the final product, they know that you can see the vision. You can dance with anything. Whether you have a dream of bodybuilding, of art, of getting to a certain profession, that is true. That's why I talk about my friend today. Um, I was given this about a year ago. Um, they actually sent me this because, you know, the channel name's on the front. Um, but it was actually so I could actually um, start drawing for my um, my series that I've always wanted to make. I've always wanted to make a series. And um, unfortunately, I didn't really get to use as much because I've always been focusing on things or just busy or honestly procrastinating because of my anxiety. And But on the inside of this, I decided about a month ago, two months maybe at this point, I decided to make a vow. I'm not going to tell you guys what the vow was, but I decided to make them a promise. Matthew, if you're watching this, if you do get to see this, just know I haven't given up yet. I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to everyone else. And I could say everything I want, but this in here. I have written my vow to you. And just as you've been there for me throughout the years, I think it's about time that I finally find a way to repay you for being there for me. So I'm going to try as hard as I can to make sure that becomes reality. And if I fail, I fail. But I pray to God that I get the strength and endurance to make sure that it doesn't happen. So... My promise is here for you guys. I'll admit it on this note. I could tell you guys multiple stories about um, not giving up and how um, there's all these other people that would be like, well, you know, when it comes to my dream, I never thought about giving up because never giving up was ever an option. Well, sure. You can blow smoke up anyone's ass about that. I Whatever. But I'll tell you what. Truthfully, from the bottom of my heart, I think it takes a lot more for someone to say that they have wanted to give up and decided not to than someone that said they never wanted to give up at all. I think the intrinsic idea of fighting against that, even though you know you want to give your entire soul to just giving out like that, that takes heart. And that's why, despite the fact that, like, you know, I've been in a lot of um, 
conflict in my mind where it's like honestly i i never thought i'd want to give up in my back of my mind it's like you know it's like yeah you do you want to stop you want to stop and I've, I've come to a conclusion where it's like yeah maybe i'm not as strong as i thought honestly i'm, I'm pretty weak I, I am pretty fragile in a lot of ways even emotionally but but it's because of that fact that i am and that i am not immaculate when it comes to my strength and whatnot that i need to keep pushing forward even that much more because how wonderful of a story for my family for my friends for those people that have passed for all the fucking suffering that i've gone through how beautiful would it be even to my own former selves to know that i've gone through all that and yet still in the pinnacle of my suffering I was still able to hold on and push past that. Despite it all. Here's where I still stand. Being able to look for a future so bright. Needs to mature us. I think. I think that's something to. To fight for. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, this has nothing to do with motivation. This is just pure unbridled discipline. And I'm talking about this not because um, I want you guys to know just the truth. That, frankly, I haven't been doing too well. That, frankly, I've been dealing with so much anxiety and depression that it has literally been physically affecting me. That um, I've been dealing with a lot of loss. A lot of loss. And I mean, some of that I didn't even tell you guys. Just because it's, you know, TMI. Um, loneliness, just, I'm not feeling the best, but I am, despite that, doing my best to try and better myself and push forward, because I think that's the reality you guys would like to hear, and even if it's for one person, even if it's not for me, even if it's for a future me, this is I'm not here to just give some fantasy of just good and bad. I'm here to show the person that sits wherever they are looking through this screen to know that they're not alone with what they're doing and to know that on the off chance that again, let's say in like a year down the line we make it, that you're not alone and that everything you're going through, I'm right here with you guys. So I love you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm not giving up anytime soon. So you better not either. Christ be with you. And as always, smile. Keep your head up. And let's pray for your future so bright. Thank you so much for eyes. My name is Blitter Sang Out. I'll see you guys next episode. Bye, guys. Whoop. Ah, I can't do the... Ah.